Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. My God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and share. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome, woman of God. God bless you. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, Jesus. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Welcome. Good morning, Sister Nadine. Welcome. Go ahead and share. As you join, I know some of you are still in bed. <laughs> it's, it's getting cold here. <laughs> it's getting cold. Mm. It is getting cold here. Good morning. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. My God. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus, good morning. Welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and begin to share. Don't worry. It is well. It is well. Just, just go ahead and begin to share the word. Hallelujah. And be in the spirit. Be in the spirit. Jesus. Be in the spirit. The Lord want to do something for us today. Hallelujah. Yes. His mercies are new every morning and great is his faithfulness towards us. And he wants to do something for us today. Somebody go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. It is well. It is well. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. It is well. Go ahead and begin to share. I thank God for each and every one of you that are here with us. And I thank God for those that are on their way coming. I cover this broadcast in the blood. I cover each and every one of you in the blood of Jesus Christ. The things that are difficult, that seem difficult, I pray that they become easy in your life. In the name of Jesus, the things that are burdening you down, I pray this morning you overturn it at the cross. You turn your burdens at the cross. You throw your burdens, cast it on Jesus, because he care for you. He said, cast your burdens unto me because I care for you. This morning I come in agreement with each and every one here. Where whatever burning issue that you are carrying, any issue that you are worried about, today we are going to put it at the cross and we are going to leave it there and we are going to worship God like we have never worshipped him before because he alone deserves the worship. He alone deserves the praise. Forget about your problems woman of God you don't know what you're talking about yes I know what I'm talking about he said cast your burden unto me because I care for you he is the same God of yesterday today and forevermore. Somebody said, yesterday I give it all to Jesus. Today I'm giving it all to Jesus. And tomorrow I will still give it all to Jesus because he cares for me. Somebody open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I just want to praise you right now. I just want to thank you right now. I just want to give you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. This morning, oh God, we cover this platform with the blood of Jesus Christ and for those that are here with issues my God you said you can fix it you said there is nothing too hard for you and therefore daddy Jesus we pray oh God that it will be well with our soul we can testify that it is well with our soul 
because you have done it in our life. You have given us peace like a river. You have given us joy, unspeakable joy. My God, my God, my God. You said you shall supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. And this morning we give you praise. We honor you. We lift your name on high because you are high and lifted up. And there is none like you this morning. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, look down on us. Remember Remember your people today that have gathered. Remember the ones that are not saved. Remember those that are not saved. They are still on the fence, battling with their fate. Oh my God. You said, come and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I came today to tell you, taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good. If he can change me. He can change anybody. So I invite you this morning to be a partaker of what the Lord is doing. There's a place in heaven for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. I said there's a place in heaven for you. You just have to make that step. You just have to forgive yourself. Hallelujah, Jesus. Make that step. Forgive yourself. Let it go. Don't let the devil tell you anything. Just ask God for forgiveness of your sins. And say, Lord, forgive me. I wash my hands clean from my past. I wash my hands clean from my past. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Accept my worship this morning, O oh God. Come into my heart. Receive me, O oh God. Receive me, Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, oh God. I know I am a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. I want to walk with you, Jesus. I want to live my life to please you, Lord. Clean me up, oh God. Forgive me for my unrighteousness. Forgive me for my unbelief. Change me, O oh God. Make me more like you, Lord. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me, O oh God. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh God. I want to worship you, Lord. Receive me, O oh Lord. Receive my worship today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for receiving me. I will walk with you until the day I die. I'm not going back to my old ways. I'm not looking back. I'm going forward with you, Jesus. Devil, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. I have nothing to do with you anymore. I want to be a Christian soldier who have learned to watch and pray. So get behind me, Satan. I am a child of God. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, thank you, Lord, for accepting me and receiving me. Lord, I thank you for receiving me this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Good morning. Welcome, Sister Perisha Mabir. Sister Catherine Wanjiru, good morning. Sister Sharon Ferguson, good morning. Saints of Christ, Sister Petronia, welcome. Good morning. Sister Angela Mitchell, welcome. Andre Mediana Brown, Sister Michelle Chambers, welcome. Sister Tamika Folk, Sister Elizabeth Palmer, Welcome, 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 Sister Carrie Love, Sister Kathy Williams, God bless you, welcome, Sister Tisha Dawkins, welcome, 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 Sister Michelle Williams, welcome, Sister Yanda, Sister Babette Thompson, Sister Raina Kane out there in London, welcome, God bless you all, as you join, go ahead and begin to share the broadcast, Chev, good morning. Hallelujah.
Go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. Let somebody come on your page and see that you are on a live broadcast that cry out to God. Sister Anika Walker, God bless you. Welcome. Sister Derek Jackson, welcome. Good morning, Sister Carol Empress. Hallelujah, Sister Denise Gray. Good morning. Welcome. Somebody go ahead and begin to share my brother Darren Wade. Welcome, Sister Kayan. Somebody go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. Welcome everyone from Jamaica and all the Caribbean islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, the West Indies, the United States and Canada and Europe all over Africa, Asia, Jerusalem, Russia, because we have people everywhere. So welcome. Welcome. welcome, 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 one and all. Sister Sheena Simpson, God bless you. Welcome straight out of Jamaica. People of God, go ahead and begin to share this broadcast. I just came this morning with one word. Hallelujah, one word. Jesus, somebody go ahead and begin to bless God with me. Help me this morning to share the broadcast. Yes, I'm asking for help. Hallelujah. I am asking you this morning to help me to spread the word. If you're sure, go ahead and share again. Share it on your page. There's a need for prayer. As the weather is changing, we are entering into fall. And this is a very depressing time for a lot of people. They stay in their homes. Some people are even suicidal in this time because especially those that are in foreign countries that are undocumented. This time is very depressing because it's family time and people don't get to hear or see family members. So I encourage you people overseas, if you have family members in the United States and Canada and in England and all over, give them, call them and show them love because in this time it's very depressing. Some of them are trapped at some living jobs that are, they're not receiving favor. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, those of you that are in the Caribbean, call your family members that are overseas. I encourage you, call your family members. Yes, call your family members that are overseas. Hallelujah. Call them. Touch base with them. It's not easy this time of year. So I encourage you, show love. Many of you are there and you're expecting them, you know, to send money back home. Some can't afford to, but they won't say it. I remember my times back in the days when I was here by myself. My children were not here and I was going through hell. And the only time I feel good is when I Hallelujah. talk with family back home. Because, listen to me, I just came to tell her today, don't argue with anyone in this time. You never know what they're going through. You never know, I'm saying it because it's true. You never know what your family members are going through overseas. You might say they don't call you anymore. But you don't understand this time of year, it's depressing for them. This time of year, it, it, it's not nice. Some of them are, this is the time when they even lose their jobs. I remember my last job, they, they fired me after Thanksgiving because there was no need for me because I became a handicap at the job. I almost broke my shoulder and, and, and I was not able to help this woman even walk her dog. And she said, sorry, Joyce Lynn, I'm, I'm going to have to get somebody else to help me because you can't help. But I got hurt at your place. And that was the last conversation we had because she never called me after that day. I left. So people of God, when you have your family member overseas, don't sit down and, and judge them and think that they, 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 they are doing well. Yes, some of them might be working, but there's no one showing them love especially if they are single. So I encourage you while you are in the Caribbean and other places, touch base. Touch base with your family member in the States and, 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 and those that are over in foreign country. Touch base with them. Call them up. And if you can send them some care package, do so. You know what they like. Show love, and, and this is just basically what I'm trying to say, this time of the year, 
show love to family members that are in foreign countries. Don't just wait for them to come and bless you. Show them you care. Call them and ask them if they're doing okay. It's very important. It's very, very important. It might sound funny, like what is she saying? I'm saying touch base with family member this time of year. It's not sweet in any foreign country because it's getting cold. They see less people. Some are in, they, they, they are at, at work, but it's like they are in, in jail and that they are in foreign country, but it's like they are in jail, they are in prison. Especially the ones that don't have no papers. And you and I know what I'm talking about. And for those of you that are here, on the life that I've gone through it. I'm saying it because I've gone through it. Family members back home, all they need is for you to send them that good money, but they need love too. Show them love. Show your family member that's overseas, show them love. Don't criticize them. If you don't hear from them, try to reach out to them. Don't, don't don't kick them to the curb because you don't hear from them. You never know what they're going through. I'm just sharing a little bit of secret of what goes on in foreign country that they won't be able to tell you. So I encourage you, call them, check upon them. Even though they might seem like they're okay, they're not okay. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. I encourage you. And don't send it to me because I already got it, please. Jesus. Link your family members that are overseas. Don't criticize them because you don't hear from them. Sometimes they are at some little job that are not even paying good, but they have to make that sacrifice just to make sure you back home can get something for Christmas. It's true. I'm just exposing a little bit of secret of what goes on in foreign. You say, oh, my mother is in foreign and my brother is in foreign and my mother is not straightened up. Call your mother. Call that brother. Call that person. Check upon them. Let them know you're praying for them, and especially in this pandemic. Some of them, they look wild. They can't get to go do the eyebrow. They can't get to go do the nails because of COVID. So they don't look good right now. Some won't take that video call because you know that they used to dress up and look good all the time. Right now, they are at these jobs that some of them can't even get fixed up. Don't criticize your family member that's overseas. Don't speak negative of them. Yes, when they are coming to see you, they dress up and they fix up because they find some time. And they save, they make sacrifice and save that money. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to right now. But I'm sure saying what God is placing in my spirit. Because somebody here need their family member to reach out to them. It's true. And I always drop this in, especially if they don't have no documents. And when I say documents, I mean travel documents. Some of them have to lie to get that little job. Don't criticize them when they have nothing to give you because they are doing their best. I'm not taking sides for anybody. Life in America is hard. Life in Canada is very hard. Life in England is hard. Don't worry about those pictures that they are posting on social media. I'm telling you the tea. It's called tea. I'm telling you the truth. If you have your family member, some of them are in some other Caribbean islands going through hell. But they don't talk about it because they shame. Hallelujah. They are shame. So they're not going to talk about it. I want you to know people of God. Don't dismiss your family because you don't hear from them. Don't condemn them. Don't say they allow foreign to change them. It's not that. 
They have come upon some situation that they can't handle. So it shut them down. It crushed them. My God. It's true. It's true. When you are in the Caribbean islands and if that's where you were born, you are free. But when people compromise and move to foreign country, because when we move to other people country, we compromise. Some of us become citizens and give up our rights back for our own country just to have a good life. Is it life? Is it life? But because of the struggle that we face in foreign countries, we have to make certain decisions that later on will become a thorn in our flesh. Somebody said, thank God for the word of God. Somebody said, thank God. Some of them even are on this platform. They thank God for this platform. Although they are at that job, they find a place that they can come and worship God. So don't let us not dismiss people. Yes, somebody said COVID make it worse. It's true. It is true. We have our family, they go to foreign country and we see them on social media dressed nice because somebody invite them somewhere and they get a one picture and you think they're rich. No, they're not rich. Some of them don't even have bank account. Don't curse them out. Some of them don't even have bank account. They have to ask somebody to send that money for you. But they can't tell you. Because if they tell you, you're going to spread it. So God is using me to tell you this. Don't disgrace your family member overseas. Some of them, they have a little documents. They don't even have a job because somebody put some serious witchcraft spirit upon them. They can't move their stock. All because they come a foreign country. You think they're rich, they have it. They don't have nothing. It's true. Some never go back home because they're shame. It's not because they find a man or a woman that, that, that changed their mind. They are embarrassed of their own situation. I came this morning to preach. Don't dismiss your family member. Show them love this time of year. It's a very depressing time of year. This message is not for everybody. But if you have someone that's overseas, call them. Show them love. They appreciate it. Some of the reason why they don't take your call is because they're shame. I'm saying it because, you see, let me tell you about the truth. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. Some, some people get a breakthrough and they travel to a small island. And as soon as they get there, the enemy decide to rob them left, right, and center. They don't even have a job. You see them on social media? Don't watch the picture. That was just a shot. Don't watch those pictures. Don't get carried away with social media. Don't get carried. Don't let social media fool you. Many people in foreign country are going to hell. Some are homeless. Don't envy them because they put up a picture look good. No. Show love to your family members overseas. If you are in the islands and you have your family member overseas that you don't hear from, check upon them. Find a way to get in touch with them. This time of year is suicidal in foreign. Some of them cannot take the cold. So that the place where they stay, they won't get out of bed. They don't have the right type of clothes to wear. They can't afford it. This time of year is expensive in foreign countries that have different climate. It's cold. It's cold. 
treat your family member that are not around you. Treat them good. Call them. Check up on them. Tell them you love them. Show them love. That will make them feel good. Encourage them. Good morning, Sister Janetta. Welcome. It's true. People have got it's not easy. Some of them are in Florida. That the temperature is kind of okay until winter get bitter. But those that are up north, those that are in Canada, those that are in England, listen to me. It's wicked. It is wickedness. Show your family love. People in foreign country don't have real friends. Because people in foreign country bitter. Cling to your family overseas. Call them up. Somebody help me to share this broadcast. I know this is not what you came for today. But the Lord wanted me to just throw this out there because a lot of people have traveled and got stuck. Some people got stuck in foreign country. And they have to put up with all kinds of atrocities. Some people, this is one of the reasons why some people end up going to church. It's not because they wanted to go to church, but because the problem was so much, they turned to Jesus Christ. Don't hate them. Some people are so heavily anointed, and it happened right in their bedroom. Why? Because that's where they cry out to God because there was nothing else to do. When winter come, they get depressed. They worship God. Some people can't do their hair. They don't have money to, to, to get their hair done. They have to do it themselves. They can't get their nails done. They have to do it themselves. So when you see that one picture on social media, and you think that this person make it, them rich, them rich. No, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. And if you are in the Caribbean and you know your family member overseas are going through hell and you can help, help them. Send them care package. Care package can be a little box with some things they like. You can send it to the post office. It will come. Do it for them. Show love to your family. Now is not the time to tear down family, criticize them, and, and, and destroy them. No. Call them. Call them up. Even if they are sending your money because they have a little bit of job. It's depressing in foreign country. Call them. Call them up. Check on them. Make sure they are doing okay. Amen? Glory to God. So, as we went through the book of Judges, it took us two weeks to go through the book of Judges, chapter 7. Good morning, Sister Derek. We went through the book of Judges, chapter 7, and um, it took us that much time, two weeks, to find out that when God gives you an assignment, you might be worried about how it's going to get done. But anything God said, it doesn't matter what it is. As long as God said, it has to get done. Amen? Yes. The last time I remember, God told me to go to Florida. I didn't have any money. He told me to go to Florida in September last year. I think it was September, October last year, and I didn't move because I said, Lord, if you say this, I know you're going to confirm it. I don't have that amount of money to try to go to Florida, pay for hotel and all of that. So I begin to pray on it. I've been preaching every day here. I never mention it. I preach, I preach, I preach. And one day I was preaching, and when I was done preaching, the Lord said to me, speak this thing on Facebook because you're going to Florida to do evangelism. 
It's a mission. It's not about you and your family members. You cannot stay at anybody's house because you're going to do my work. So don't think it's about you. God began to rebuke me. And, you know, so in February, he opened that door and I flew to Florida. Seven people gave their life to God. I, he provided a church. I'm telling you this thing. Sometimes God will tell you to do something and it seemed impossible. It is not impossible once God said. It seemed difficult. But some of us, we want to stay in our comfort zone. We don't want to get out of our comfort zone to do anything for the Lord. So when God tell you to do something and because it's not going to be close to you, you dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. After that, after I came back from Florida, the Lord began to show me some different places that he wanted me to go. And I know the names of places were mentioned on this platform. And therefore, you see, that was in February of this year. So, in August, I traveled. It was for my own personal business. But then the Lord stepped in and said, you're going to have to fly down to Dominica Republic. And you're going to have to feed my people. So one day I laid here, I was in pain because I'm not feeling well. I was, I, you know, I took care of my business. I laid here trying to get healed, praying for healing to come. And the Lord said, first the Lord showed me, I was walking down the street and some kids were with me. I don't know them. And the Lord said, you're going to have to feed these kids. I said, feed them? I'm in pain. He said, you're going to have to do some charity work. Go on Facebook. You need buckle. And I prayed on it. And the next day, I came on social media. I couldn't show my face because I was in pain. And while I was in that pain, I began to say what God asked me to do. And therefore, yes, I went downstairs and I spoke to a few people and everybody was ready. I said, wait a minute, what is this? Everybody was ready to do charity. People of God, when God tell you to do something, you might not be in the best health. You might not be in the best position. But whatever God said is because there is something in it for you. What was in it for me? Healing. What was in it for me? My faith to be lifted. Because I didn't know this thing was going to happen. You see me on the street walking with my waist tied with my prayer shawl. Giving out food to people. I was in the city. All these big mansions all around me. God said, it's not, nothing like this. You're going to the countryside to visit the poor people. And what I saw when the Lord took me there, it brought tears to my eyes. People of God, I'm talking about doing the work of God. It's not easy. When you see someone doing God's work, don't judge them. Don't criticize them. If you don't have anything good to say, keep your head straight and mind your business. God said go and feed these people I just want to thank God for each and every hand that stretched forth while that charity work was being done and you know but before all that was over he said to me once a month you're going to do this thing make sure somebody bills being paid he said this ministry is not about you God rebuke me, people of God. You see, I come here and I sit here with a straight face. It's because of the spirit of the Lord that's upon me. It's not me. He said, make sure there is money to feed my people. So ask for it. Ask for it. And once a month, that bill has been paid and they have grocery to eat. So people of God, when God speaks, we have to be obedient. It's not about you. It's about God's work. So the Lord provide. We went to the countryside. We had to rent an SUV because that was what we needed for the groceries. Because he said, feed them. 
And it was garbage bags that we have to use. And God was very specific. He told us what to put in the bag. People of God, trust God when he speaks to you. Trust him. God will never lead you wrong. Whatever you do for others, God will do it for you and your family. Even the very day that I was leaving, I had to be obedient. To, that I missed my flight because I misunderstood the itinerary. I'm saying it because it's true. But God provided. I just want somebody here to know. Show love. Show love. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When God told Gideon to go and fight the Midianites, to put Israel back in order, they didn't have a prime minister. They didn't have a king. They didn't have, it was just judges. So that's why they went into dilemma because they misuse and mishandle the things of God. Hallelujah. Yes. So I came today to tell the people of God, listen to me. It doesn't matter how much we, we chew up the Bible leaf and we pray and we speak in tongues and we prophesy. If we don't show love what's in our heart, we are nothing according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If we cannot show love to others, we are nothing. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible make it clear, my brothers and my sisters. Hallelujah. According to the Bible, according to the word of God, Paul said, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, that means he's speaking diverse tongues. And of not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tiny thing or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, this was Paul telling you about himself. And he was telling you if he's not walking in love, showing love, giving love. Um, I came this morning to talk about love. We cannot argue with love. We cannot argue with someone who's coming to tell us about love. The love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that is with us from now on forever. Show love. We cannot be selfish in this time. Call family members overseas and show them love. Especially the ones that are in big foreign country. Call them up. Show them love. They need love. Hallelujah. I just want to say this. Sometimes they send things to you. It's just for you to know that they care for you. Paul said, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Some people will give so you can take it and give to the poor. They will never be a part of giving to the poor. They'll give it to you so you could go and do the work. They don't want to get their hands dirty for Jesus. It's easy to give. It's very easy to give when you have a heart of giving. We are talking about love. Love. Some people have never experienced bondage when they were in the Caribbean. And the moment they travel to another place, they enter into bondage and slavery and prostitution. Did you know? There are a lot of people that travel to foreign country. That's why they be, that's how they became prostitute, just to buy food. Yes, I'm saying it because it's true. I used to hear about it when I used to live back home, but I didn't understand until I came here. I see it firsthand happening. Educated men and women come to foreign country and just to buy food, they end up into prostitution. They end up being drug dealers, smugglers. They end up being crackhead.
Somebody says some of them love to receive but not to give. A lot of people come to foreign country and foreign mash them down. Foreign mash them down. They hide. They don't want nobody to see them. We are reading the word of God. This is reality. If you don't have love, it doesn't matter what you look like, you are nothing. It doesn't matter how much money you pay for tithes. It doesn't matter how much money you give to, to others. You need love in your heart. Without love, he said, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. He means that even when you do charity and you don't have love. Because some people say, oh, pastor, what you need? I'll send it. And they send it. You only send it because you were asked to send it. But did you agree to give it without somebody ask you? I learned so much in the last two months. Even about myself. Avail yourself for the Lord to use you, my brothers and my sisters. Open up your heart. You don't have to allow somebody to ask you. You see a brother in need. Help them. God will drop some people in your spirit. Somebody's a woman of God. I'm paying my tithes, but I'm sending $30 to sow a seed into somebody's life who don't have a job. So this person can receive a job. It's not about the money. It's about the heart that you have. Ain't nobody asking you for anything. It's all about what's in your heart towards other people. It's all about what's in you concerning others. After the fight, remember Gideon called his family members to help him. He called the tribe of Manasseh and Ephraim. And after they won and after all this was over, they tackled him. They went to him. Remember, he called them because some men were getting away. We have to remember that Gideon never actually fight. He just presented himself and do what God said. But then when those that escape run away, he called for backup. And they won because they slaughtered him. So after all this was over in chapter 8, they went to him, the children of Ephraim, the bad ones. Remember I talk about the wicked ones, the wild ones. They went to Gideon and they said, Why have you treated us this way? Why didn't you send for us when you first went into fight with the Midianites? And the Bible said they argued with him hatedly. They, they wanted to fight him because it was a heated argument. So they argued heatedly with Gideon. But listen, the fight was already won. You see, God don't want nobody to get glory. God wanted the glory. Remember, it was 32,000 men. People of God, I came back into the Bible. Remember, we were going through this for the last two weeks. I took a few days out of Judges. I'm back in it. Because there is something to be learned. Hallelujah. We are into chapter 8, Judges chapter 8. So these men, the Ephraimites, Gideon family, because Gideon was from Manasseh, and Ephraim was the brother. There's Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's two sons. So now Ephraim men wanted to know from Gideon, why didn't you just call us when things were heated? Hallelujah. Bible said, and Gideon said unto them, What have I accomplished compared to you? 
aren't you, aren't you, aren't even the leftover grapes of Ephraim harvest better than the entire crop of my clan, of Abiza? So you see, Ephraim still was looking at himself as the worst. Even when God used some of us, we still don't understand the power of Almighty God upon our life. God used Gideon and the mission was accomplished. But then they were not satisfied because they didn't get to see the strength of the fight. Because the strength of the fight was not of man. It was of God, people of God. Hear me out. Gideon said, what is this? We not even value the leftover crop of your, 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 your farm. Remember who I'm from, the Abiza clan. My daddy's name was Joash. He was a Obia man. That's what Gideon was saying. Remember where I'm from. Remember whose family member, who I'm related to, who is my daddy. Sometimes, you see, we, we, we look at things from the physical standpoint. But all this was spiritual. All the people of God, sometimes the family that you come from will keep you in bondage. Even though God used Gideon, powerful, because the Bible said God clothed him with power. Gideon never needed any help to fight. All they make was noise and shout. That's it. One for Gideon, one for the Lord, and one for Gideon. That's it. A sword for the Lord. They didn't fight anybody. So the Ephraimites couldn't get what's going on. Why did they have to run away? Why didn't you send for me? So I could finish them quick. But God didn't want no physical strength up in the air. Because he said, they will take the glory. They will say they were the one who won the battle. The battle is for the Lord and victory is for you. Just take victory. It's easy. Just take victory. Hallelujah. My God. Gideon said, God gave you victory over Oreb and Zeb, the commander. So Gideon now was just penciling everything out and said, look, who did you destroy? The two commander. And you're not satisfied. What more do you want from the Lord? He give you victory. Take it. You just want to kill everybody. Come on. My God. Those were the men that were killed by Gideon men. Everybody else were killed by their own men. There are some war you don't need to fight. God fight it for you. And he will send people to finish the ones that think they got away. Just be obedient. Somebody said love cover. Yes, cover a multitude of sins. Hallelujah. Just be obedient, my people. My God. Gideon said, the commander of the Midianite army, what have I accomplished compared to that? So Gideon was saying, look, you have a status now because look who God allow you to kill. The commander. Your status turn up. Your, 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 your credit score gone up. Yes. Because you destroy, God allowed you to kill two kings. Two, 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 two big shots. I cannot be, I cannot compare myself to that. When the men of Ephraim heard Gideon answer, their anger subsided. You see, sometimes we need to just speak from our heart. Soft answer, turn it away right. But grievous words stir up anger. Anger can be stirred up when you use grievous words. Gideon put them in their place and said, look, you guys destroyed commanders. I didn't kill anybody. All I did was blow the horn and hold the, 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 the torch. 
What are you worried about? God give you victory. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied where you are in life? What is your concern? What kind of fight do you want to win? Because that fight is not for you to win. God is already fighting for you. Take victory. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost. I am born again. Take glory, Father. Jesus, take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost. I am born again. What are you worried about? God give you and your family victory. Stop worry about who died and who didn't die. That's not your job. Take victory and live with it. My God. The Bible said, the, the argument cooled down in verse 3. My God. Yes. And the anger abated toward him when he said he had what he had said. Jesus. So Gideon then crossed the Jordan River with his 300 men because none of his 300 men didn't die. Oh, hallelujah. None of his 300 men didn't die. God will allow you to do what he said for you to do and you're still standing. You are still standing The 300 men going back home without a scratch, without a spot. God give you an assignment. You think it's too much because of your last name, because of your skin color. Oh, me? You know who my grandfather is? Oh, who your grandfather is greater than God? Whatever God tell you to do, do it and don't complain. Don't argue. You cannot fight against God and win. You cannot kick against a rock and have the same good shoes. Be obedient, people of God. Gideon took the assignment and they had the victory. All he had to do was to be obedient to God. All the, the, the 31,700 men that were there, they left the food and victuals because they were not going to the war. So you see, God provide more than enough food for them to go to the war. You are concerned about God is telling you to do this and God is telling you to do that and it's too much. God will provide the resources you need to do it. I never wonder one day how I'm going to find money to feed people. I just take out the card out of my purse and go to the grocery store and begin to shop. Why? Because God provided. We don't have to question God when he gives us assignment. He provides whatever God places in your heart to do. Do it. Enough is enough. No more argument. We're tired of being disobedient. We are tired of BS. Yes, I'm using the word disobedient. We are, we are Christians, but we are disobedient. We don't want to be obedient to when God gives us assignment. Yes, when God sends people to us to bless us, it feels good. It feels good. It feels real good when God sends people to bless us. We want God to use us. We want God to give us everything we need. But when it's time for us to be obedient to God, it's a problem. We become, we have iron fists. Our hands seize, we can't use them anymore. Our fingers don't move. When it's time to do things for man, it's okay. But when it's time to do things for God, we have a problem with it. May God help you. <laughs> we cannot argue with the things of God. May God help you. May God help you. 
May God help you. May God touch your heart to do good. Everything from God is good. If you receive something good, it came from God. Somebody gives something to you, and before the week is out, you hear about it. That was not from God. That person is looking for credits. It's trying to take God's glory. Hallelujah. Let us do good until it hurts. Give and it will come back to you. Press down, shaken together in measures. You won't have enough room to receive. Gideon was obedient. And you see, even after the fight, guess what? His own family said, Gideon, why you never call us? Why you wait until the, the, the commander got, got, got? That was your assignment to destroy the commander. Nothing else. Because if Gideon called them and they won the fight, they would say they won the war. God wouldn't get any glory. Sometimes God don't want you to tell everybody your business. Because some people, they will jump to help you. But before you know it, everybody else know that they help you. So you have to be careful who you ask for help. Sometimes God will use a stranger to bless you. And you said, oh, that person is looking for friendship. That person is not looking for friendship. That person has been obedient to God because he asked somebody close to you to do it and they refused to do it. So he used somebody far away to do it. God used somebody far away to bless you because the person close to you refused to do it because they think you're not worth it. It's too much. So when God sends someone to bless you, just bless it and keep it. Bless it and keep it. When a stranger blesses you, that was God Almighty himself showed up for you. Because the person that he initially spoke to to be a blessing to you refused. This message as a peace for everybody. If you are late and you're just joining, I encourage you to go back and watch the replay because you miss out on all the good stuff. Hallelujah. People of God, sometimes I'm watching the replay and I get goosebumps and I begin to speak in tongues and I'm saying, Lord, what is this? I don't know that woman that's preaching. So I know that you are getting good food right here. Because when I go back to watch it, sometimes I have convictions too. So allow the Lord to use you. You will never win if you try to argue with the things of God. Because if you are disobedient, God will use somebody else to do the exact thing that you refuse to do. Hallelujah. Yes. If you disobey God, God will use somebody else that's available and then he will charge you. Sometimes we go through some trials and tribulation because God charge us because of our disobedient spirit. Sometimes we pick that this thing, I will do this, but I'm not going to do that. It was not what God said. He said, do it and don't worry about it. Have you ever done something that God tell you to do and it seems so difficult, but the moment you do it, it feels like a burden lifted off of you. Yes. There was a time when the Lord told me to give a sister $500. I wasn't even close by. But then when I gave her the money, she said to me, you know, somebody said God told them to give me money but they only have 100. I said, I don't, they don't know what I was going through. It was hard for me to release the money, but I had to. But when I released that money before the week was done, I received $1,000. So when you're obey, 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 obedient, obedient, obedient to God, don't try to have a long conversation. Just release and walk away because God is getting ready to check you out. Give your faith higher, higher level of faith. When you move in obedience, your faith is lifted. It was not easy because I had to go to the bank and take that money and I release it. 
but I had a feeling no money could buy. I, people have gone, let me tell you something about God. When you obey him, you get this feeling, this empowering feeling. You can tear down hell with your pinky finger because God strengthened you. He have empowered you. Bible said he gave Gideon power. He clothed him with power. Gideon never need nothing extra. Gideon and his men walk away from the fight without a scratch. When God ready, ha, yeah, 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 yeah. When God ready to bless you because of your obedience, you don't, rem you won't remember what you did. Obey his voice. God have a special relationship with everybody here. This is why he bring different things to us here. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. We have different challenges. We have different challenges. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. We have different challenges. When God wants to open a door for you, he will first give you an assignment. And sometimes you drag your foot for even six months to a year because you don't want to do it. Because that sounds too good. That person don't deserve it. I'm not giving my stuff to somebody who don't have a job. Who are you to make that decision? What you have don't belong to you. It belongs to God. But once you obey God's voice, <laughs> and he begin to show up, you get double for your troubles. Today I pray, may you receive double for your trouble. May you receive double for your Jesus. Somebody, I, I get chills. May you receive double for your troubles. What are you looking for? What did God tell you to do that you have a problem doing? You see, Gideon, walk away. I, I, I only stop right there. Jesus. Gideon and his men cross over. Gideon then crossed the Jordan River with his 300 men. And though exhausted, they continued to chase the enemy. Hallelujah. See? Let me share something with you. Whatever God said about your life, it will come to pass. Your enemies will never defeat you when you are obedient to God. Whatever God tell you to do, do it. Do it. Don't argue. Don't complain. Somebody said, Lord, I will never argue with you anymore. Lord, I will never complain. I'm going to obey your voice, Lord. I'm going to do what you say because I cannot win. You will never win when you fight against what God said. There is a reason why he tell you, to do it and you will never know until after you do it many of you god gave you so much assignments and you still didn't do one jonah got one assignment from god and he wanted to fight and he said he wanted to die when he think about what happens in 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 in, in what you call it over there that place where god sent jonah nineveh when God told Jonah go to Nineveh, Jonah wanted to die. He didn't want to go. He'd rather die. He said to the men, throw me overboard. I'm done with God. God wicked. God want me to go to Nineveh, to all those wicked people. But God said, Jonah, you see a land of wicked people, but I see a great city somebody might say they don't want to deal with you because you become something else you're not clean anymore you're dirty who are we to criticize you we see you as a person that is going around and pleasing the world and god said i that is my soldier don't touch him i have anointed him for special reasons we cannot fight what god bless we cannot, listen to me, we cannot argue with somebody who God bless. 
who God bless, no man can curse. People will try to curse you. Yes, because you come to foreign country. When they know me in Jamaica, I was the gang leader. I was the leader. I was the one that make all the decisions to go to which club and what club. And they don't know that it was the demons that were fighting me. When I came to America, I calmed down. Because things are not the same. Nobody don't give you nothing. You have to work. Your looks can't take you any place in America. If you want to know if your looks can take your places, Michael Jackson was rich and he didn't see a rich man. He see a ugly man. Hey. Yes. So he had some facial reconstruction because he think he was ugly. God bless him with a beautiful voice. But he didn't see the beauty in what he was doing. And he looked in the mirror. People of God, it's not about looks. It's about what's on the inside. You come to this country and you think looks valuable. Hey, hey. There are some pretty mad men down the street. There are some pretty mad women on the street because they can't handle American lifestyle. It drives them crazy. An old friend of mine sent me a picture of a man in Queens. He said, look at this man. Look at his teeth. They were spectacular. Look at his hair. And he have a doctorate degree, but he's a madman. He was working in government office. The man become mad. He speak properly. But he live on the street. Let me tell about this place will drive you crazy. Not about looks. So when you, if you plan to live here, or you're coming, come with Jesus. Come with Jesus. Because if you're not wrapped up in Jesus, you're going to end up crazy. Some people live here for years and they never make it. And once they turn their life over to Jesus, all their doors open. Because they became obedient to God. Somebody say, so true. The man live in Queens. Somebody sent me his picture a year ago or so. Man, handsome. Good looking. The man, the man pretty like a woman. Pretty. When he opened his mouth to speak, you can tell he invested in his mouth care. But he's mad. And in the Caribbean, we make us, they make us think that our looks and our shape and our skin color can take us places. Not so in foreign country. Not so. No, not so. Somebody said, I take my portion in Jesus. Take it. This is a warning to a lot of people. This message, something is in this message for everybody. If you want to move to a foreign country and if you don't have Jesus with you, you try to find him before you travel. Find Jesus. My biological sister called me and she said, sis, I'm coming to America and I'm going to California. I said, let me tell you something. If you don't come with Jesus, you're going back home without money. And so said, so done. She was in California and she was going to hell. And when she called me, there was nothing I could do for her because she received warning. Come with Jesus. She said, I couldn't go to church because that was the only day my day off that I have to do my laundry. I said, come with Jesus. Next time I saw her, I was in Jamaica. I said, sis, 
Remember what the Lord told me to tell you. She had to leave before her time. They rob her money. Everything was gone. I'm telling somebody here today. Whatever you have in mind to do. Don't let the flesh do it. Come with Jesus Christ. Whatever God said for you to do. Do it. Don't argue. Do it. Do it. Don't worry about your looks and your shape. Come with Jesus Christ. Come with Jesus. And if you're here and you're not saved, I encourage you to go back and watch the replay from the beginning. Come with Jesus. My God. You see, Gideon never lift a finger to fight anybody. Because in one hand, they have a torch. In another hand, they have the horn. But God gave them victory. And anytime the commanders die, everybody done. Pure dead bird leave. I encourage you to come with Jesus. In all that you're doing, come with Jesus. Don't harden your heart against the word of God. When God gives you an assignment, just do it and don't argue, don't complain. Come with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Today, I came to tell you, if you are here on this platform and you're not saved, try Jesus just try him for one month. Turn your life over to him completely for one month. Just one month. Yes. Turn your life over to Jesus. One month. There was a woman that was getting ready to backslide. And she began to count her blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done for you. What did God do for you? Count your blessings. Has God ever done anything for you? How many times did he save you from accident? How many times? You see, if Gideon was not careful, Ephraim, they would fight him. So he had to find a way to make them feel good and said, you killed two commander. I'm nothing. Sometime, for peace sake, we have to tone down the argument. Soft hands are, turn it away, rat. Grievous words, stir up anger. Sometimes we know we have right, but for peace sake, we have to just take our time and let the argument go. Somebody said, and some people, family, bad mind them, fight them, see them, don't know the hell they are going through. Yes, you're in foreign country and your family members back home, they hate you. Some try to put witchcraft on you to limit you. To Yes, if it had not been for the Lord that was on many of you here would have been dead because your own family would have killed you. True witchcraft, envy, jealousy. Some people go to Jamaica on vacation and they never come back. Their family killed them there. And the family don't, because they don't tell their family the truth, what goes on in foreign country, that it's rough. But you know, I remember one day I went home. And I like to go to the beach to get my own fish. So I, I was just under, under the shed where the people are selling fish. And I just begin to talk. And I, I don't remember if I was saved. I don't remember if I, I think so, I was saved. I think it was when I just gave my life to the Lord. And I just started to talk. I wasn't preaching. I just started to tell them, when you see somebody come here, man, just show them love and, and, and respect them because some of them have to borrow money to buy a ticket to come. 
And I'm telling you, people of God, before I know, people were gathered around me to listen. And they said, where in America do you live? I said, why? They said, because we never hear nobody come to Jamaica and talk like this. I said, because they refuse to tell you because of pride. I said, many people, you see, come here. The clothes they wear, sometimes friends buy it for them. Credit card pay their ticket. They don't have anything. They pop barrel because people give them stuff they buy cheap. I just tell them the truth. People of God, tell people the truth. That's what caused a lot of people to hurt family member. They say, look at you, you live in France so long, and somebody else, sister so-and-so, or brother so-and-so, children come, and they're rich. No! Many of them are crooks! Scammer! Come to impress you in, ja in Jamaica to make you feel like everything is okay. Some when they come back, they don't have anywhere to stay because the bills, the bills, the bills. It's true. It is true. Some people save their money and they fix up themselves. It takes them a while to come. And when they come, they, they're limited because they don't have a lot of money to offer you. Because they have a nine to five job. But some come and they throw this here and there and everywhere. And if you do your own research, they don't even work in America. I don't want to go into it. But I just want you to know, show love in this time. And whatever the Lord touch your heart to do, do it. A lot of people paint the wrong picture. So when they come, you want to know where do they live. <laughs> Somebody said, Lord, forgive me. Somebody said, Lord, forgive me. Somebody say, Lord, forgive me. Somebody say, Lord, forgive me. Jesus. We don't condemn anyone on this platform. We pray their strength so they can be increased. We pray for their family. We pray for God to bless them in areas that they are going through hell. Some people are here and they are going through a lot. So today I open my mouth and I pray for each and every one of you here. In all your weakest areas of your life, I pray for strength. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and I declare strength upon strength upon your life. In any area, if you are here and you're not documented, I pray for God to open that door for you. If you are in Jamaica and you have a visa and you want to travel so bad but you don't know where to go, I pray for the Lord to open a door for you. Sometimes we are looking to family and family cannot help us. God want to send us to places so we can be a blessing. Hallelujah. So I pray for you right now. I pray for your doors to be open in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for every family issue that's going on in your home to be fixed right now by the one and only Dr. Jesus, my God. I pray for that sickness to go right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, my God, I pray for healing and deliverance upon your people today. As you touch their heart to be a blessing, oh God, to pick up the assignment that you have given them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for strength upon strength. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And somebody say, it is done. Somebody say, it is finished. Hallelujah. My God. Somebody said, it is well with my soul. I decree and I declare every word today that was spoken. I seal it in the blood of Jesus Christ. May you never be depressed during this time. 
May you never be stressed in this time. May anything that is oppressing you be gone by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command it to go right now. Whatever is in your way to stop you, to block you. Oh God, I pray for you right now. I cover you in the blood. Jesus, somebody go ahead and begin to share this broadcast. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. People of God, if this message was yours, I encourage you to stretch forth your hand and be a blessing to this ministry today. We are looking for help because on the 15th of every month, we have to bless a family with groceries and money to pay some bills. Yes, people of God, we need equipment and we are working towards it. Somebody, somebody has made an offer, but people of God, we need help. We need help. It is finished. We need help, people of God. The ministry need help. People are in need of help. And we need to get our equipment in order. Hallelujah. We need to get our equipment in order. So the broadcasting will be less difficult. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to stretch forth your hand and bless the ministry right now. Oh God, open your hand, people of God. We need financial help. Stretch forth your hand, people of God, and bless the ministry and say, look what the Lord have done. We came this far by faith. We came this far by faith. It is by faith while we are still here on the broadcast. Yes, so many have happened, but by faith we are here. Somebody go ahead and begin to bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to bless the Lord. I thank him. If he touches your heart to sow in the ministry, go ahead. Go ahead. If the message bless you, the woman of God, this is my message. I'm taking my portion and I'm sowing my seed to be a blessing. Woman of God, I'm sending my seed. Wait for it. It's on its way. Go ahead, people of God. Stretch forth your hand in love and bless the ministry. I pray for every heart, hallelujah, in obedience that will set forth to be a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, remember your people today. Remember them, O oh God. Give them testimony, O oh God, and increase their finances for those that will be a blessing to the ministry, O oh God. Increase them, bring it back to them in a thousandfold. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember, whatever you do for the Lord, it will sure come back to you. The number is at the bottom of the screen, 860-634-8557. And we have a YouTube channel, people of God. We need more subscribers so we can go live from YouTube. Go ahead. It's Rev. Joycelyn Rattigan. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People of God, listen to me. Let your voice be heard. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. That is one of the ways that you can let your voices be heard. Share the broadcast and be a blessing. There goes the YouTube um, link. It's Rev. Joyce Lynn Radigan. Hallelujah. Share it. Subscribe to it. Hallelujah. It is done. People of God, my time is up. I have to go.